we haven't seen Socceroos in such a long time. It's all I almost forget what the squad looks like. It'll be very interesting to see how the formation will be and how we're looking. But I'm worried we we, we don't have any game changers. I feel honestly, I feel like this is an episode of Home and Away today. I'm being that dramatic with everything, but I am concerned we're not going to have any goals. Um, you know what? We've got a potential game changer, and it's whether or not he gets selected. Um, and he's played a couple of games for Scotland, um, but they've all been they've all been friendlies. Um, so there's an opportunity. A guy called Jason Cummings, the cum dog. Yes. 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 Exactly. You've seen it. Um, he's a he's a maverick. He's a apparently one of the uh, the zaniest characters. Apparently, he's been named as um, since Gaza. He's out there. Wow. Um, he's played alongside Martin Boyle, so Martin Boyle knows him really well and speaks to him regularly um, about the possibilities of playing for Australia and 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 how how much he enjoys it and how much he looks forward to it and how professionally he feels it and. That it would be brilliant that if uh, that if Cummings were to be part of it, he's only twenty five years old, um, Jason Cummings. So, I, I think listen, I think there's a there's an opportunity to add something a little bit different hmm. in in someone like him. Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you think about the the usual the usual suspects, um, Aaron Moy, of course, is hmm. is still someone that that we will rely on heavily. Problem is, Daniel. The players like Daniel Azani haven't progressed like we'd all hoped. He's really struggled wherever he's gone on loan. He's struggled whether it's injuries initially at Celtic, and then since then, he's really struggled to get any 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 regular game time. I'm not quite sure why. Mm-hmm. And it's not like he's gone to a level where I believe that he's not good enough to succeed in. On the contrary, I think he's in. A, he's gone to levels where I believe he should be flying in. Yeah. Um, and for, for, for some unknown reasons, it's not quite working for him, um, which is a real disappointment. I'm pretty sure he's been called up for the under 23 side for, um, Olympia or had been, I think that game, they actually, that camp's been canceled. I think, um, it was supposed to be in Saudi Arabia, the under 23 national team for the, you know, the Olympic side. Yep. Um, so I think he's a big chance of going to the Olympics, uh, in Japan, but we need him, we need him to, to perform Firstly, the 23s, and then secondly, to be so good that he's that he's eschewing to play for the national team, the Socceroos. And, and you know, players like Daniel Azani don't come around too often. Um, well, there are a lot of players like Daniel Azani that have been around who have had an sure. amazing amount of ability, showed glimpses of ability, and then for one reason or another, have faded away. Mm. And we have to hope that that doesn't happen to, to Daniel Azani. Uh, Jackson Irvine, I'm really particularly, he's the one I'm looking forward to, to seeing play. I've, you know, don't watch a lot of Scottish football, might surprise you, but certainly, you know, from all reports and some of the movements he's been doing uh, since joining Hibs has been fantastic. So I think he'll probably play a pretty big role. Yeah, he's, listen, he's very lively, he really, really hard worker, um, throws himself about. Um, and I think first and foremost, what's been hugely important for him is to find a club and a club where he's going to be playing every week. And at Hibs, he seems to have done that, and that's that's massive for for the Socceroos. I mean, obviously, when you when you think about the certain positions, the the one position as well, where there's a little bit of a concern in in one way. Firstly, you've got uh, Matty Ryan is obviously not playing at Arsenal, and, and and seems to, I don't think, well, it doesn't seem like there's going to be an opportunity unless something changes dramatically between now and the end of the season. I mean, no things can happen and. Leno can get injured, something can happen. Maybe the manager will make a decision and allow him to play a game or two, who knows, um, which is really tough for Matty. But I think that was always going to be the challenge for him when he went to Arsenal. Um, Danny Vukovic has left Ghent. Um, I don't know if you've seen the news. He's, yeah. he's literally from one day to the next, he's decided to go back to Australia. His wife is due, I think, their second child. Um, so we'll have to wait and see where he finds himself. Um, but the positive is Mitch Langerak who's been, been exceptional. I think he's kept five clean sheets in his, in his last five games. They've played six games so far. He's only considered one, which was an own goal. Uh, they're second on the table in, in, in the J-League and uh, with a game in hand, so they could easily be top of the table. So at the moment, he is absolutely... Well, at the moment, even last season, he was flying. Mm. Um, so, and I think with, with uh, goalkeepers, when it comes to Australia, we've always had an abundance of goalkeepers and seemingly playing at, at pretty decent levels around the world and uh, over the course of time. 
and there always seems to be one or two playing really well. So fortunately, you know, even though for Maddie it's not great, he's not playing, the, the, the door may open for someone like Mitch where he's playing week in, week out, playing really, really well. And there may be an opportunity, um, even at this stage of his career, then to 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 get an opportunity to play for the Socceroos uh, and and maybe more more regularly for the time being. We'll see. So without oversimplifying the position, I would never want to do that to you, Mark. I think, am I right in saying that at least with a goalkeeper, you could just take almost you could take the league standard out of it. All they need to be doing is to be facing shots regularly. Do you know what I mean? So the fact that he is doing that. And Ryan isn't really. You would almost say he's completely in a better position. Whereas, if Ryan was playing every week, obviously then your Premier League trumps J League every day of the week. But really, the goalkeeper just needs to be facing shots. It does in terms of level. And when you say facing shots, yeah, it's game time. It's it's not just yeah. facing shots in terms of training, whatever. It's game time. Playing. It's match match awareness, match um, practice, match fitness. Um, for a goalkeeper, it's more about <clears throat> it's the rhythm, you know, spatial awareness, the the distances, balls over the top, um, being in a rhythm, um, playing regularly, playing well, and and certainly Mitch has been doing that, and he's been doing that not just this season, he did it last season as well, broke the record for a number of clean sheets in the league, so he, he's um, he's doing really really well. So the pressure is on, and and that's what you want. You want competition. In, in as many places as you could possibly have. And uh, the goalkeeping position, we've always had that sort of competition, um, or pretty much most of the time, you know. So it's great to, to, to at least have that fallback. Um, and uh, let's see. I mean, you know what? The games won't be until June. Um, so things may also change between now and then. You, you just don't know. But at this current moment in time, you know, if, if Australia were involved in an international this, this, this uh, coming weekend... I'd be very, very surprised if Mitch were not playing, particularly if it's a, it's a, if it's a, a World Cup qualifier as such. Um, but obviously, that's not the case. So obviously, by June as well, Matty Ryan, you would assume, would have a new home or, or at least know his home, whether it's staying yeah. at Arsenal or, yeah, or going possibly, elsewhere. Yeah. Huge next move for him, though, isn't it? Massive. To get it, it right. Yeah, it is. Because I, I think one thing is clear, that he doesn't have a future uh, at, at Brighton. Certainly not as number one. Um, Robert Sanchez has established himself and um, Graham Potter's really put his neck on the line in terms of, of making that decision. And I don't believe he's going to change anything. <clears throat> um, Sanchez hasn't shown any reasons why to, to, or to think that maybe he's wobbling, maybe he's going to find it difficult, maybe he's struggling with the, the pressures. He's not. He's just got his first call-up for the national team as well for Spain. So I don't think it's going to be... Um, an option for Matty. So the next next move is huge, like you said. I mean, what is he? Twenty eight years old. Um, he needs to make a decision on whether he he has an opportunity. Potentially, I've heard potentially there is a potential that he could stay at Arsenal. But then, you know, if you're staying in a club like Arsenal, what are your opportunities? What will your opportunities be? What options will you have in terms of game time? And that would be his major concern. I suppose once he's established himself from the start of a season, though, he will be playing your Europa Leagues. I would have thought. I think no surprise that Leno's playing the current Europa League games. But next season, he'd be, he'd be the cut man, minimum. We say that, or you say that. It, it's, you know, you, you've got to understand from a goalkeeper's perspective and in a club like, like Arsenal, any club really. And, 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 I, and I think a lot of it will do, have to do with the manager. Um, if the manager is really strong and says, you know what, I've got two really good goalkeepers, one's going to play this competition and the other's going to play this. You're my number one, but he's going to play this competition. At what point, and we see it time and time again with clubs, that a goalkeeper will be, the second keeper will be given an opportunity to play in a cup competition. So whichever cup competition that is. And they get to the latter stages, then all of a sudden the manager makes the change, brings back in the number one. We saw it at Arsenal not so long ago with, uh, with Petr Cech being swapped in and out with the Champions League games. So when he first signed for them, he, he thought, you know, he was told that he was going to be playing Champions League and then ended up finding himself on the bench and not playing. Um, and I think it doesn't work particularly well for, for anyone. 
I think it's difficult for a number two then to step up and try and play, say, for example, a cup competition, particularly one where you want to go far in the competition and do really, really well. Mm. You need regular football. You can juggle it for a little while, but over the course of time, you, you know, you, if you haven't played any games in between and all of a sudden you're playing a cup game in December and then the next one's in February. Yeah. I mean, it's a long period of time when you're not playing, say it's Champions League or, or January. Yeah, February, it is February in a normal season. So if you Jan- in the middle of January, to then the next game would be in February and then that's a knockout game. Are you prepared to play a c- keeper that hasn't been playing for two months mm. in such a huge game? Um, we saw it, like I said, we saw it at Arsenal uh, a number of years ago with um, with with Petr Cech and um, his name actually Espino. Eludes, Espino. Yeah. yeah, Espino, and 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 Espino ended up having a, a bit of a disaster because he didn't play. He hadn't been playing games regularly. Yeah, almost cost cost Arsenal uh, uh, passes into the next round. Yeah. And then I suppose as well, Ryan's fear, particularly with Arsenal, would be, well, they might not even be in Europe next season. <laughs> so that's one competition altogether. That he yeah, that's exactly right. So then all of a sudden, you're only, you're only relying on the domestic cups. And yeah. then Arsenal will be looking at it going, well, okay, so FA Cup doesn't start until December yeah. for, for the Premier League sides. Yeah, you've got the, the League Cup. But if you're unlucky, you get a, 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 another Premier League opposition in, in the in the first stages that you're in, you know, what is it? I can't remember the League Cup. I think it's like, I think Arsenal would be in round two. Is that right? Yeah. Um, if they don't qualify for Europe or the League Cup, I think. If you're unlucky and have a bad day and he makes a lot of changes, you could lose that game. Yeah. You know, and you could be out or, or second, the, the, the second round that you're in, you may lose, you know, and all of a sudden <laughs> you've only got the FA Cup, which starts in December and you've only got the league to play. And when you're in the league, you're not going to play unless something yeah. dramatic happens. Enjoying our YouTube channel? Be sure to subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.